Rachel, many will immediately recognise you from the hugely successful series Dragon's Den. Uh, but of course, before the show, you'd already won the prestigious Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award for your business Red Letter Days. When you were starting out, did you set a clear intention of where you wanted the business to go, or did you sort of just have a light bulb moment? Well, um, I, I started Red Letter Days really with the idea to create a business around what do you give the man who has everything. And I think when I started it, I didn't really have any idea that it would become a market leading brand, that I would win awards. It was just really from a passion to create a business. And I think sometimes when you set a business in motion and just kind of go with the flow of it, it sort of takes you where it wants to go with you. And so it, it was kind of like just... Uh, uh, kind of my life path unfolding really. Mm -hmm. And do you think there was a degree of beginner's luck because you didn't have an idea of where you wanted it to go that it kind of took off or do you think hard work played as much of a part? I think I was really passionate and I, I think there was a lot of ego involved because I'd gone into business with a, a big kind of uh, rah, you know, and um, sometimes you just don't want to allow something to fail and that's enough to just keep you going even though nothing's working to just keep on and on and just and, and actually I would say persistence and determination are actually two of the really key traits because most people 90% of people actually just give up and when, it, when the going gets really tough they just give up and, and that's um, that's the biggest reason for failure well, that, that kind of leads on to my next question, because obviously Dragon's Den, everyone knows, a huge success and, and still is today. But while that was happening, um, Red Letter Days was starting to fail. And after being awarded for your success, did you sort of worry that writing about failing might damage your brand? Well, my brand had already been quite badly damaged through Red Letter Days failing at the time when Dragon's Den came on air, because bear in mind we'd filmed it before. Um, but actually, um, it worked dramatically to my favour because one of the first things that happened was that I got an offer to write a book about my experiences. So I wrote a book called Business Nightmares about the fine line between success and failure. And that book actually came out in May 2008. And in that September of that year, the whole economy crashed. So I was actually in the perfect position of someone who'd survived adversity to be able to go out and say, this is how you survive the recession and don't worry. And so actually it was perfect for me. And I think sometimes when, when problems are befalling you in life, you, you tend to kind of think that it's bad. Whereas looking back, it was an absolute gift. Well, it's funny because that nicely leads on to my next question, which is exactly that about, about the book. Did you sort of, at what point did you go from kind of why me to goosebump moment of thinking, actually, there's a bit of a message for me here and this has worked to my advantage? Well, you kind of live life forward and understand it backwards. So it's only really looking back that I understand the journey that I was forced on because no part of me wanted to go through that. Um, and so that's why I'm quite an advocate now of going with the flow and really trying to allow life to happen and to flow with it as opposed to trying to control everything and being in resistance because when you go with that, that flow and you just trust and have faith in kind of divine guidance, it sort of takes you a lot further and faster than if you're trying to make it happen. Um, in terms of your journey, I mean, you, you've studied so many things at the power of the mind. What drew you to feng shui in particular? Well, I was always interested in feng shui. And bizarrely, um, back in 2010, I was quite randomly asked to speak at two events about feng shui. And I, so I did these, these talks about how I'd use feng shui in my business journey. And uh, at the second one, I just said, you know, and I would absolutely love to train in this. Um, and, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And, and two people came up to me afterwards and said, I'll train you in feng shui. And I'm like, oh, actually, and it sort of planted the seed. And then I thought, you know, if I'm going to train in something and I'm going to invest the time and the money, um, actually, I'm going to go to the top person in the world. And my idol was Lillian Tu, who was a great businesswoman, who was the top feng shui author of the time. So I invested in going to spend a week with her in Kuala Lumpur. And it was an incredibly transformational week of my life. And I just um, really, um, yeah, I learned about feng shui and the power of uh, earth energy 
So there's lots of different types of energy, but feng shui is really about um, earth energy. So um, it was a, a really brilliant turning point. So that's just one of your businesses. Um, but of course, Source TV, that's what we're here for today. What's next for Source? Well, I think Source is actually at a turning point because sometimes in business you launch out with an idea of what you're going to create and then sometimes you have to kind of sit back and assess where you're at. So we're here at the Mind Body Spirit Show. So we've had a really great four days of really interesting feedback, interesting people coming to the stand and talking to us, interesting people coming on camera. And at the same time, I'm a great believer in feedback, so we've just done a whole um, survey of... Um, of our database to actually say, what do you think of Source? And we just left it open-ended. Tell us what you think. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How should we transform? And so uh, I, I, I just think sometimes in business you have to just pause and sometimes it's a bit of a roundabout pause and then decide where things are going to take you next. And sometimes those ideas show up um, sometimes from left field. Mm -hmm. And I guess you kind of trust that experience well, with all the success that you've had because sometimes pausing can seem like procrastination. Well, there's a big temptation to be just action orientated and to do, do, do. And, and most of us are programmed to spend 90% of our time on output. But I'm, one of the things I teach is 50% input, 50% output. And I just think it's really important to have time to think, to plan, to learn, to step back. Because when you do that, when you spend 50% of your time on input, when you go to output, you can be massively effective, you know, because you're aligned and you're clear and you're not just like a headless chicken just doing, doing, doing. So you, you can actually start taking inspired action and that's far more powerful. And one last question is, obviously you're a passionate mentor but a fantastically successful businesswoman. How do the two differ? Well, I'm a great believer in both and rather than either or. Either I'm a businesswoman or I'm a mentor. But actually, Source is a beautiful combination of both because it's taken my mentoring where I, I could really see that all of the, the clients that I was trying to help, what they really needed was um, the technology and the marketing platform to help get their work out to a wider audience. So the entrepreneur in me saw the opportunity in my uh, in my market of mentoring clients to actually create a new business. So it was it, a source is a beautiful combination of the two roles. Rachel, thank you very much. Thank you.